Now let's talk about selenium. So we just talked about zinc. Now I'm switching gears to talk about a different mineral, in this case selenium. Well studied, especially in the treatment of HIV infection. And in this particular study, you can see they used selenium at 200 micrograms per day. That's a very common dose. I do not consider that to be the optimal dose, especially for patients who are already fighting an active viral infection. Selenium is very safe and widely used as a nutritional supplement. 200 micrograms per day is the most common dose in clinical trials, as I just showed you, and also in most high-potency nutritional supplements. Reasonable doses during viral infections might be up around 600 micrograms per day. Here's the biological and clinical rationale. Selenium is safe, well-studied, widely used, biologically and clinically potent, starting at about 200 micrograms per day. Selenium also provides anti-inflammatory benefits. As with many nutrients in my antiviral nutritional protocol, selenium inhibits the NF-kappa B pathway that is both pro-inflammatory and, number two, commonly hijacked by viruses to promote their replication. During infectious events, including in this context coronavirus, excess free radical production and damage contributes to unnecessary inflammation that becomes a vicious cycle independent of the infection and immune response. This collateral damage serves no useful purpose, but it clearly contributes to disease pathogenesis and complications attributed to the infection. Thus, antioxidant therapy and nutritional supplementation during times of infection can help to limit this collateral and unproductive oxidant damage. As I've already stated, selenium blocks the NF-kappa B pathway, and that helps to reduce viral replication. By neutralizing free radicals, selenium also helps to reduce the number of mutations, and that helps the immune system to defeat that virus. When viruses are in a pro-oxidant environment, they mutate more, and that promotes their escape from the immune system. Point number five, again, it's antioxidant. Point number six here, point number six here, selenium provides gene regulatory benefits and intracellular signaling benefits. By helping to neutralize free radicals, many antioxidants help to normalize gene transcription and expression. And as you can see from this quote from 2007, the selenoenzyme theoreduxin reductase affects the redox regulation of several key enzymes, transcription factors, and receptors. Selenium deficiency decreases antibody titers and several aspects of cell-mediated immunity. Selenium supplementation can counteract these effects. Point number seven, selenium is also what I call lymphokinetic, which means that it helps to promote the movement of lymphatic flow and reduces secondary skin infections, especially in patients with lymphedema. Clinical uses of selenium supplementation include general antioxidant support, treatment of autoimmune thyroiditis, specifically Hashimoto thyroiditis, alleviation of anxiety, depression, and tiredness, treatment of lymphedema and prevention of secondary skin infections, Elimination of Keishan disease in China, which is an endemic cardiomyopathy actually caused by an enterovirus. Also, elimination of Keishan Beck disease, endemic disabling degenerative arthritis in Southeast Siberia, North Korea, and China. So why do we see so many of these viral infections arising from China? We see new pandemic viral infections arising from China, the 1957 Asian flu, the 1968 Hong Kong flu, the 2003 SARS coronavirus, and now we see the 2019 novel China coronavirus. Why do we see these pandemic viral infections arising from China? The terrain of China is famously deficient in selenium, and this selenium deficiency was eventually found to be the cause, for example, of Kishan disease, which is known to be caused in part by a mutated enterovirus. This disease has effectively been eliminated through widespread selenium supplementation. Research and treatment of Kishan disease irrefutably established the widespread selenium deficiency throughout many parts of China. I propose here, and very reasonably I might add, that the same selenium deficiency that causes Kishan disease and Kashin Beck disease, both of which are endemic within China, that same selenium deficiency also increases viral mutagenesis and activity of these viruses that are specifically known to undergo interspecies transfer 
development, mutation, and maturation. In other words, the endemic selenium deficiency that affects animals and humans in many regions of China creates an incubator or a perfect storm for the generation of these novel virus strains, which are mutations of previously mild viral infections. So I'm going to summarize that and repeat it one more time. I propose here that the same selenium deficiency already known to exist in China and some of the surrounding regions increases viral mutagenesis and activity of these viruses that are specifically known to undergo interspecies transfer development, mutation, and maturation. In other words, the endemic selenium deficiency that affects animals and humans in many regions around China creates an incubator or perfect storm for the generation of these novel mutated virus strains which result in these pandemic viral infection outbreaks.